consistently for national standards. Since the abolition of the Scottish Central Fire Brigade Advisory Council in 2004, the SBU have called for national response standards, national resilience across Scotland. Our response to the National Framework document in 2005 consistently calls for the governance of our service to be at the hub of service delivery, national standards delivered locally. <coughs> Bluntly, comrades, since the FBU had the audacity, the temerity to take industrial action in support of a claim for a decent wage, we have been ignored, sidelined by those implementing detrimental changes to our service. Also, the conditions of service for FBU members since their strikes action in 2002 and 2003 have been under constant attack. Our employers and their hired hands have feverishly implemented modernisation, reform and change with a mind for power, while awarding themselves huge wage increases and seemingly oblivious to the critical eye of their workforce and the communities they are supposed to serve. Conference. Those opposed to the single service options have failed to explain how frontline services would be protected, how our fire, how our fire station cleaners, our cooks, our janitors and our firefighters would be protected in employment with such a reduced budget. Fire service chiefs and conveners have adopted a novel approach to the reduction in budgets. Our president alluded to them yesterday. Year one cuts, year two cuts, year three cuts, year four some more cuts and then we'll amalgamate. Conference ask, FBU ask, after another four years of cuts, what will be bloody left to amalgamate? <laughs> what we don't need or require is eight chiefs on eight corporate structures failing to deliver a cohesive, democratically accountable system of governance. Fire boards are in their appointed advisors have abdicated their responsibilities as, cust as custodians of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. The Fire Brigade Union represent uniformed members at all levels. Officer control retained full time duty system. We acknowledge concerns felt about, uh, amongst our members. Comrades, there are many unknowns as to the future structure at operational level. FBU members will decide at branch brigade and regional committee levels as to our position when the consultation process has been exhausted. The FBU have a proud record of resisting cuts to our service and we will continue to fight proposed reductions in service cover. Our members have and will always support their fellow trade unionists being attacked in the public sector. We look for your support in protecting our service. The FBU believes that a Scottish Fire and Rescue Service with national standards, delivered locally, robustly audited, can deliver a service fit for, for purpose in the 21st century, protect fire service employment, and enhance the lives of the Scottish people. Conference, I move. Thank you. Do you have a second, Sarah? President, Comrades, Congress, Hamish Strummond, Dundee Trade Union Council, proud to second motion 52. I'm proud to have marched alongside Jim, Fire Brigade Union members, and 500 others to save Balmossy Fire Station from proposed cuts there. Proud to still stand alongside them as they fight to defend our lives. Congress, to risk your life for a community is to demonstrate exactly how much you care for it. The workers who are represented so well by the Fire Brigade Union do so each and every day for each and every one of us. And we should honour them for it. But the service chiefs do not. Instead, they cut. I don't sleep soundly in my bed in Dundee of an evening because Chief Officer Hunter is working hard to cut costs. I sleep soundly in my bed in Dundee of an evening because outstanding comrades like Jim and like the brothers and sisters of the Dundee Fire Brigade Union are not only putting their lives on the line for mine and for those of others, but they're also fighting every step of the way against the cuts that are proposed by the fire service chiefs. One Scottish Fire and Rescue Service would free up valuable resources within the service, it would bring about national standards to the benefit of all, and it would increase the bargaining strength of the Fire Brigade Union to benefit of not just their members, but of Scotland as a whole. Congress, support the motion. Any other questions?
President, uh, Congress, John Stevenson from Unison, Scotland, uh, speaking on 52, to inform Congress that we'll be abstaining on this motion. We're not opposing it, but we can't commit to supporting a national fire and rescue service without a full debate, discussion and consultation with our membership uh, who provide the, the vital infrastructure for that service. Now, we know that we've just heard the FEU say that they envisage this being a, a service with local control, nationally based, but with local control. But we have general concerns about the sucking up of local services into national structures. And while we respect the views of our FEU comrades, and we'd have to defer to their understanding of the needs of this frontline service, we'd be worried if it became a template for a host of other services. And I know that FEU comrades would contest whether joint board systems in many areas actually delivers local accountability and local democracy. But Unison has long taken the position that services should be democratically controlled and accountable to the electorate at the closest point to that electorate. And that's why we're thinking long and hard at the moment about the proposals for a national care service and whether the evidence would really stack up that this would provide a better service for people that gives them a real say in that service. And that's why we're suspicious of some of these reorganisations, uh, being flagged as being better for people when they're really about cuts, with huge bits of scarce funding being plugged into the reorganisation itself instead of the services. So we'd also be really concerned if it became a model for what is being mooted about a national police force with all the effect that has on civil liberties and the fundamental uh, traditions of policing by consent. And finally, we have concerns because of the very principles we fought for in creating and building our Scottish Parliament. Subsidiarity, services organised as close to the people as possible, no sucking up of locally controlled services into a central monolith, and a real parliament, not a glorified local authority, taking over local functions. Colleagues, we respect the FBU's analysis of what they think is best for their members and the service that they and our members provide together, and which we all rely on. And it may well be, in this case, that is the best way forward. But our members have yet to arrive at a position on this significant change and the possible effects on their jobs and their services. Their voice will also have to be listened to in this debate, and it's for that reason that Unison are standing today, but are hoping to play a full part in the debate in the future. Thank you, Congress. Thanks, John. Dear Congress, Frank Hutchison from UNITE, supporting the sentiments behind Motion 52. UNITE has members in the support services which assist the fire and rescue frontline staff. And it is many of those members, the cleaners, the cooks, the janitors, the drivers, and the maintenance staff who will be at the brunt of the proposal to cut the services and jobs. Just like the cuts agenda, generally it will therefore be the lowest paid, predominantly women workers, who will be affected most. Instead of this, we should be questioning the logic of maintaining each